Hello, Ebony People TV viewers. How well do you know Ebony State? Get ready to be amazed as we dive into the hidden gems of Ebony State. In today's video, we are uncovering three fascinating facts about Ebony that you probably did not know of. From a unique non Igbo speaking community to a rich history marked by the echoes of the past to a musical legacy that has touched hearts worldwide, Ebony State is full of surprises, I tell you. Stick around because you won't want to miss these incredible stories that make Ebony truly special. Meanwhile, if you're yet to subscribe, kindly do so now and let's get started. Kickstarting with the first fact is a man who is long gone, but his music still lives on in Nigeria and the world at large. We are talking about Prince Nico Mbaga, the renowned high life musician and his timeless hit, Sweet Mother. Prince Nico Mbaga, born on January 1st, 1950 in Abakaliki, Nigeria, was a celebrated high life musician with a unique background. His mother was Nigerian and his father was Cameroonian, giving him a rich cultural heritage that influenced his music. Despite his Cameroonian roots, Prince Nico is proudly claimed by Ebony State as one of its own, thanks to his birth and early life in Abakaliki. Prince Nico's most famous song, Sweet Mother, recorded with his band Rokafio Jazz, is one of the greatest songs in African music history. Released in 1976, his eighth song is a heartfelt tribute to mothers, capturing the essence of maternal love and sacrifice. Its catchy melody and poignant lyrics have resonated with audiences for decades, earning it the title of the best-selling song in history by an African recording artist. Prince Nico's contribution to music goes beyond his hit song. He was a pioneer of the high-life genre, blending traditional African sounds with contemporary influences to create a unique and captivating music style. His band, Rockerfield Jazz, played a a crucial role in popularizing high life music and influencing many musicians who followed him in their footsteps. Prince Nico is one man who died at a young age and whose death was a very painful one. If you wish to know more about Prince Nico and how he died, check out our most recent videos for the full details. Moving on to the second fact about Ebony State, do you know there were slave routes and markets in the state? Ebony State's reputation as the salt of the nation is well earned thanks to its abundant salt deposits. These natural resources has played a significant role in the state's economy and identity. However, alongside this positive attribute, there are historical elements that cast a shadow on the state's past. During the era of the slave trade, certain areas within Ebony State, particularly Eza and Afikbo, were infamous for their slave routes and markets. These routes served as grim reminders of a time when human beings were traded as commodities. One notable location is the slave market route in Eza, situated in Eza South local government area. This market was a pivotal point where slaves were traded before being transported to other regions during the inter-tribal wars and the height of the slave trade. While the slave trade era is a thing of the past, Ebony State now faces the modern-day challenge of human trafficking. This form of exploitation exploitation has plagued the state and beyond. Driven largely by high poverty levels, human trafficking has become the new face of slavery, affecting many vulnerable individuals within the region and beyond. The transition from historical slavery to contemporary human trafficking underscores the persistent struggle against exploitation in a born state. While the state boasts rich natural resources and a vibrant cultural heritage, addressing the root causes of human trafficking, such as poverty and lack of education, remains a critical priority. At number three is the fact that right here in Ebony State is a group of people who are known to be Ebonians but are non Igbos living in the state. The Oring people occupy a scattered and heterogeneous territory across three states in Nigeria which are Benue, Cross River, and Eboin. This geographical spread places them in three different geopolitical zones, highlighting their significant cultural footprint. Within Eboin State, the Oring community has woven a hybrid culture through intermarriage with the Igbo people, blending traditions and creating a unique cultural mosaic. The Oring settled in Ntezi Aba in Abakaliki before spreading to other parts of Eboin State. Remarkably, they established their presence in the Abakaliki region before the arrival of the four major Igbo groups, Eza, Izi, Iko, and Ungo. This early settlement underscores the deep historical roots of the Oring in the area. Today, the Oring people of Ebony State can be found in several key settlements, Tezi and Okuto in Ishilu local government area, Efiom in Oahauku local government area, Amudo and Okpumoro in the southern part of Oahauku, 
Specifically, Ntezi is bordered by various communities including Dungbo to the north, Opoto, another Orin community to the southwest, Ezulo to the northwest, Izangbo to the northeast and Eza to the southeast. Within Ntezi, there are five Orin-speaking villages which are Agaga, Ulepa, Iyopa, Amata and Biledeba. These villages comprise various hamlets and farm settlements alongside two additional villages which are Umwezeka and Umwezeokoa, located on the outskirts to the southwest and southeast respectively. Despite their distinct origins, the Oring people have embraced a strong Igbo identity. Historically, from the pre-colonial era through the Nigerian Civil War to the present day, the Oring of Eboin State have identified with their Igbo counterparts. They bear Igbo names, adhere to Igbo cultural values, and share linguistic ties, seamlessly integrating into the broader Igbo community. To the average Oring individual, their identity is intrinsically linked to the Igbo, and they proudly maintain this connection wherever they go. Meanwhile, this group of people can also be found in Ufia of Benue State and Ukele in Cross River State. Wow, what a journey! From the fascinating Oring community and their unique hybrid culture to the deep history of slave routes and markets, and finally to the unforgettable music legacy of Prince Nico Mbaga and his hit Sweet Mother. We've uncovered some truly amazing facts about Ebony State. These stories remind us just how rich and diverse our culture is. Thanks for tuning in to Eboin People TV. We hope you enjoyed learning about this hidden fact of Eboin State. If you found this fact as fascinating as we did, make sure to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content about Eboin and beyond. Drop a comment below about which fact surprised you the most. Do you still resonate with Prince Nico's jam, Sweet Mother? Or you probably know someone who is a native of the Oring tribe in Eboin State? Do let us know in the comment section below. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like us to explore. Until next time, stay curious and keep celebrating the incredible culture of Eboin State. See you in our next video. Bye-bye.